ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yoga Mehnoot, Senior General Manager of Indoor Management Association. On behalf of IMA, I welcome you all to the IMA 20th International Management Conclave 2011 and to an exciting knowledge journey for today and tomorrow. To start the proceedings and to coordinate the inaugural session, I invite Mr. Jagdish Verma, past president and director IMA, chairman I group, I lead group. Mr. Jagdish Verma. Thank you, Yoga. Very good morning to you all. All my young friends, managers sitting in the gallery, we have more than 3,000 there. Kindly make sure there is no sound coming from there so that you can take all the learnings that you get from this session. Thank you very much. Once again, very good morning to all our distinguished guests here. In a life, sometimes a moment comes which is beyond the life and bigger than life. One such momentous occasion is on us today. We are privileged to have an iconic visionary leader of business, Mr. Narayan Murthy with us. And it's a privilege, friends,
lifting up the mountain. The mountain has come to Muhammad today. Let us extend a very warm and cordial welcome to our distinguished guest of honor and a highly distinguished, distinguished global Indian, Sri Narayan Murthy ji, with the typically affectionate Indori applause. Please sit down. Sir, the spirit of the audience shows how truly privileged we feel that you have so graciously accepted our invitation and come to Indore. If you are here, Infosys can't be very far behind. Aspiring professional entrepreneurs and the vast assembly of young management students present here seek to draw inspiration from your monumental journey from Shunya to Shikhar, from zero base to hero status, taking India to the dizzy heights of the status of a superpower in information technology. Permit me, sir, to quote in Hindi a suitably altered version of a famous Raj Kapoor song, which I imagine you must have sung when you established Infosys in 1981, and that is our inspiration source. Nikal pada mein khuli sadak par, nikal pada mein khuli sadak par, apna sina taane, manjil kahan kahan jana hai, khud maine pehchana, khuda par nahi chhoda, muskilon se moh nahi kabhi moda. Friends, if Narada ji would have been here, if Narada ji would have been here instead of me at this podium, you know what he would have said? Narayana, Narayana, what an extraordinary murti. A living image, a living image of godliness in human frame, beautifully balancing Profits with ethics and market with Mozart. Friends, thank you for accompanying me with such clapping and applause, our distinguished guest of honor. May I now call upon the audiovisual recitation of the IMA citation honoring. Shri Narayan Murthy. Visionary entrepreneur and innovative base setter, Sri Narayan Murthy has, in a short span of three decades, left an indelible imprint as a torch bearer of India's IT service industry. He has straddled with great flourish the global IT services landscape with a string of many splendid achievements. With far sighted vision, he articulated, designed, and implemented the innovative global delivery model which has become the foundation of success in IT services outsourcing from India.
His astonishing success as a creative entrepreneur without any family business background has established a unique benchmark of a professional technocrat blossoming into an outstanding industrialist. His life has truly become a huge source of inspiration for aspiring young professionals. His journey as a first generation industrialist started with the setting up of Infosys in 1981 with a very modest seed capital pooled by him and his six associates. Infosys has since grown into a four billion US dollar worth global company with an annual turnover of 1.3 billion US dollars. This speaks volumes of his dynamic leadership as CEO and later as chairman. Sri Narayan Murthy has set an example by voluntarily retiring from day-to-day -day involvement, passing on the baton to professional successors. On a broader canvas, he has announced his plan to identify and encourage promising professional entrepreneurs. A gentleman to the core, Sri Narayan Murthy is a living example of simple living and high thinking. In business as well as in personal life, his espousal of ethical values and practice of social responsibility reflect his live social conscience. Winner of innumerable prestigious international awards and honored by several governments, leading business schools, global NGOs and economic journals, Sri Narayan Murthy ranks amongst the most admired as well as influential industrialists. IMA salutes this towering global Indian and feels greatly privileged in honoring him with its Lifetime Outstanding Achievement Award 2012 at the IMA International Management Conclave, December 2011. Hope to triumph, leading in turbulent times. Friends, I have now the pleasure Friends, I have now pleasure, I take pleasure to invite fellow board members of the Indore Management Association on the dais to join us in honoring Sri Narayan Murthy ji with the IMA Lifetime Outstanding Achievement Award.
Thank you all. Well, friends, today IMA has been privileged and honored to be able to bring such a visionary leader amongst us, and I hope he feels a part of us also. Nayan Murthy, sir, Indore is a very small place. As compared to the 30 countries where you have your operations. But Indore has something very different in it. Just like Seoul is an entirely Wi Fi city, first in the world, Indore is a very humane city, probably the first in India. We have. <laughs> we are sure that very shortly when Infosys sets up its shop here and we will work together you would probably find that Indore is a place where you would be wondering why we were not here earlier so we welcome you sir and we thank you for having spent your time with us moving further well friends now we have reached the moment that we have all been so eagerly waiting Listen carefully, it will change your life, that's my guarantee, because now I am very cordially inviting the legion Mr. Narayan Murthy <laughs> to kindly share his thoughts on the theme topic, hope to triumph leading in turbulent times. Ladies and gentlemen and my young friends, the one and only Mr. Narayan Murthy, sir. Honorable Minister, respected office bearers of uh, Indoor Management Association, the dynamic collector, Sri Raghavendra Singh, my friend Anjani Jain and his family, my young friend Nikita, with whom I had the privilege of having breakfast today, guests, and most importantly, the young men and women in the gallery who form the future of this country. First of all, I'm very, very grateful to the office bearers of the Indoor Management Association for your kindness, your generosity, and your affection. I would promise you that I will definitely work harder and hopefully smarter to deserve this kindness this generosity and this affection. The theme of the conference today is hope to triumph leading in turbulent times. For the first time in the last 300 years of the history of this country, we stand at a window of opportunity that comes but rarely. Never before in the history of the country in the last 300 years, India was taken seriously. Never before were we given a seat at the high table Never before did India, uh, did people 
wonder about what India could contribute to the global bazaar. But that opportunity, that privilege, and most importantly, that responsibility has now been thrust on the men and women in the gallery to deserve and demonstrate that this country indeed can redeem on the promise and therefore my young friends this is an extremely important moment to be young men and women in the history of this country when i was your age in early 60s i did not have that opportunity wherever i went in the country and i did go to several places i was in several parts of karnataka i went and studied at iit kanpur and went and started my career at iim ahmedabad then i was in pune but not even once did i hear any of our people and more importantly any of the few foreigners that i got to meet speak with deference speak with a res with respect and speak with wonder you are the recipients of that extraordinary privilege therefore you have a responsibility much more than what distinguished people like mr jain our minister and many of the other people have had this is not an easy responsibility so the the mandate we have is very clear and that is to lead in these turbulent times to create hope to create confidence that we will indeed triumph that will indeed reach our objective that we will indeed scale the mountain Yes it is true that amidst us we see signs of concern signs of despondency but at the same time there are a lot of good things that we have done there are very few nations in the world which have been able to grow at 7.5% compounded annual over the last 10 years even in this year of very difficult economic situation on the global scale on the global uh, front india hopes to reach anywhere between 7 and 7.5% in its gdp growth we have been able to export about 260 to 270 billion dollars our software industry has received considerable respect our cricketers have done extremely well wherever i go whether it's in frankfurt or in vienna or in london people talk about bollywood in other words even in these difficult times there are enough indicators that the world expects us to perform better than most other nations 
The world expect us to behave like leaders. And therefore, this is the time for hope. This is the time for confidence. This is the time for high aspirations. And that is where you, the young managers, have your work cut out. After all, management is all about maximizing the outcomes while optimizing the utilization of resources. That is what management is all about, nothing more complicated. Therefore, our task is to set a high aspiration. Our task is to reach for the stars while ensuring that we utilize our resources optimally. And the biggest resource that we have is the quality of human mind. And that is where I believe the angsters become extremely important. That's where we all have to provide opportunity to our angsters in everything that we do. In every decision that I have taken in my company, I made sure that at least 30% of the members of the committee were less than 30 years of age because I know the future is all about them. I know they have a lot more to gain from the future than I have. Therefore, I know they are much hungrier about succeeding than people of my generation. But in order to do all of this, you have to first become good citizens, even before you become good managers. Because at the end of the day, it is good citizens that make up a great nation. And a good citizen is one who can indeed become a good leader. Unless you are a good citizen, it is very unlikely that you will become a great leader. And what are those attributes of a good citizen? First, aspire high. Remember that a plausible impossibility is better than a convincing possibility. Second, Lead by example. Before you preach others about all the good things that they have to do, practice what Mahatma Gandhi said and be the change that you want to see in others. Therefore, lead by example. Let people say, we all want to be like him or her. Third, you have to have good values. Honesty, integrity, fairness, transparency, accountability, and excellence in everything that you do will have to become your mantra in everything that you do. Doesn't matter what you do. I tell you, in my company, I make it a point to introduce a, an attender who keeps our conference rooms clean and tidy to, I make it, I make it a point to introduce him to the dignitaries that come to emphasis. I have introduced my colleague Chandrapa who keeps my conference room clean to President Putin, I have introduced him to Prime Minister Zawin Lai, uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Zurongji. I have introduced him to our Prime Minister Vajpai. I have introduced him to Mr. Lal Krishna Adwani. The reason why I have done it is I want him to have pride in what he does. I want him to realize that whatever he does, 
is as important to the organization that anybody else does. So therefore, please remember that excellence in what you do no matter how trivial it is, is extremely important. Today I was very pleased with young Nikita because she made sure she was there at 8 o'clock in the morning, she made sure that I finished my breakfast on time, she made sure that I left for this place on time. I think that is the kind of commitment to excellence that every one of us must strive. Next, remember that the biggest disease that this country has is apathy. We see problems around us and we behave as if that problem belongs to somebody else. We don't take decisions. We postpone things. We think that by postponing decisions, somebody else will solve the problem. Please don't do that. It is extremely important that every one of you learn the importance of taking quick and firm decisions as early as possible. My children make fun of me that whenever they tell me something, I'll go and do it quick, quick, quickly and immediately. And the reason why I do it is I am so much appalled by the circumstances around us where we simply postpone decisions. And that has been a big problem with this country. Remember that there is nobody else who will take the decision for you. There is nobody else who will solve problems, uh, who will solve your problems. You will be the one who will have to solve your problems. I am reminded of a Polish author who wrote a book about his stay, his life in the United States. When he was immigrating from Poland to uh, United States in the 1920s, on the ship that he was traveling, everybody was telling him, I believe, that the streets of New York were paved with gold. And he writes in the very first paragraph of his book, I learned three truths when I landed at Ellis Island. One, the streets of New York were not paved with gold. Number two, the streets of New York were not paved. And number three, I was the one who was to pave the streets of New York. The point I am making is simply this. The problems of our country will not be solved by somebody else. We have to take quick decisions. We will have to solve the problems ourselves. So please overcome apathy. Remember that the only way we can indeed achieve fast economic progress to solve the problem of poverty in this country is by embracing meritocracy. Choose the best people for a job and they will deliver it, deliver it to you. We Indians are very, very uncomfortable in facing unpleasant situations. We don't want to give negative feedback to anybody. I have had several occasions in emphasis where people have come and told me that I was never told that I was not doing a good job and all of a sudden I've been asked to go. This happened in the case of a human resources manager. When he was requested to leave, he came to my room and he started weeping. I said, why man, why are you sleeping? He said, you know, why are you weeping? He says, you know, I have been given this marching orders, but I was never given any feedback. And one of my colleagues, a very senior uh, person, one of the co-founders, he was heading HR at that time. 
and he did not believe he was not comfortable in telling that manager that he was not doing his work properly and therefore he will be given six months one year to improve so therefore please learn to give unpleasant messages it is so much better that you give early warning to people and demo and tell them how to improve rather than uh, skip that and all of a sudden put people in really difficult situations then of course discipline is extremely important if you want to achieve anything remember that without discipline you will not be able to achieve that the main difference I find between developed nations and countries like India is primarily lack of discipline in this country if you are an elite person if you are a powerful person if you are a rich person it means you do not have to follow the law of the land I get surprised that when I am standing in the queue at an airport or at customs or immigration people come and tell me sir you can bypass the queue and come and we will handle this what I say why should you do that I am as much expected to follow the rules as anybody else so therefore when you as youngster see somebody doesn't matter he may be a minister he may be a, you know he may be a big bureaucrat he may be a rich industrialist it doesn't matter if he or she is violating the queue please stand up go to him and tell him that he is not supposed to do that because at the end of the day unless we follow discipline we will not be able to do tough things and if we don't do tough things we will not succeed as a nation I don't want to go on and on and on because I told them that I would rather answer questions and answers from the youngsters uh, therefore let me stop here and I'll be happy to take questions from you all it's very difficult to recognize the people from here because of the bright light so but then just introduce yourself and ask me questions but I only one set of you know a, 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 a couple of rules one it has to be alternately from a girl and a boy and it is always a girl who starts with the first question please And remember that no question is stupid, only answers are stupid. I am giving the answer, so you don't have to worry. person also and make sure it's a girl first well at all I, this is from Neha in all times whether turbulent or comfortable our behavior will have to be ethical there is nothing like a time when you can forego ethics there is nothing like a time when you have to follow ethics. it has to become part of your DNA only by being ethical can you overcome turbulent times in other words in these times it is extremely important to remember that it is the ethical behavior that will pull you out of these difficult times 
you know I'm in I carry an electronic version of a book called Winners Never Cheat. It is written by the, 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 the former uh, chairman of the, of the, Wharton, uh, the Board of Governors of Wharton Business School, John Huntsman. And it's a very small book. I wish every one of you youngsters buy a copy of it. I am not a salesperson. I don't get any commission. But I can tell you it's a wonderful book. It is, it's a thin book, so it's easy to read. It is all about the importance of uh, ethics and how if you are ethical, you will become a winner. So ethics are extremely important at all times. So the second question is from uh, a young student, uh, Raman Singh. What is the biggest challenge of converting this opportunity into triumph? Check. check. What is the biggest opportunity? What is the biggest challenge, challenge. of converting this opportunity to triumph? Well, yeah, uh, uh, it's from Rohan. I think the, the biggest challenge in converting any obstacle to an opportunity is mindset. The biggest enemy that we have is not from outside. I want every one of you to remember the biggest enemy we have is our own mind. It is extremely important for every one of you to first create a positive mindset. It is extremely important for every one of you to set a high standard of achievement for yourself. It is extremely important for you to start every day with a positive frame of mind. You can end the day in a not so uh, positive frame of mind, though I would prefer that you end the day too in a positive frame of mind, but it is extremely important that you smile when you get up uh, in the morning. So if you create a mindset that you say, I will succeed, I will do one good thing today, I will demonstrate that even in one small activity that I am better today than I was yesterday, even if you say, I will do a simple act of demonstrating to myself that I am a better human, human being today than yesterday, I can assure you that that day you will achieve something worthwhile. And if you did it for a few days in succession, you will be completely transformed. And by the end of that period, you would have achieved extraordinary stuff. So therefore, please banish that enemy which sits in your mind. So the next question uh, is from Aparna Tiwari. Uh, she's a student of the Swami Vivekananda College. What do you think are three top qualities of good leader? Uh, this is from Aparna. The three good qualities of a leader. First one, courage. If a leader does not have courage, then no other worthwhile attributes of the leader will come into play. Let it be very, very clear. I don't know of any great leader in the world who has not demonstrated courage. Second, a leader has to lead by example. Everybody is watching the leader. Therefore, if a leader says, make sacrifice, for him or her to create trust in the minds of people that what he or she is saying is good for others, 
he will have to first walk the talk he will have to practice the precept he will have to sacrifice first and do that i am sure all of you youngsters know this story of mahatma gandhi i believe once a lady went to him in calcutta and she said gandhi ji you know my child wants to eat lot of sweets every day uh, and please uh tell this child not to eat not to be so much after sweets because he won't listen to me he will listen to you so gandhi ji said no please come after 3 weeks so she went back and she came after 3 weeks and then gandhi ji told why it is very important for the child not to eat too much of sweets how it's bad for the teeth and how it's bad for stomach body all of that then the lady said gandhi ji why did you have to wait for 3 weeks to give this lesson you could have said this that first time itself then gandhi ji said lady i also like sweets therefore i first wanted to see what it is to live without sweets for 3 weeks before i can advise so the second important aspect our second important attribute of a great leader is leading by example the third important attribute of a great leader is communication unless a leader can communicate simple ideas in a powerful manner unless a leader can communicate the grand vision unless a leader can create enthusiasm and confidence in the minds of people people won't succeed people won't join him people won't do all the wonderful things that he wants almost without exception every leader that has achieved anything great has been a great communicator of course there are other important attributes but you have asked for three i have just given you three but there are other issue other attributes too yeah so there are a couple of questions which are very related uh, to each other uh, from various students as well as some senior faculty members they are they want to, uh, they are asking us that would you want to if you become the next president of india what stops you what what stops you in becoming the next president of india no no remember remember we are a democracy it is not it is not for us to become anything it is for the electoral college to decide who in their considered opinion is the best person to occupy a certain position so it is not for me to decide it is for the electoral college you people know very well the who the electoral college members are they are members of the parliament they are members of the state legislators legislatures so therefore they are the people who will have to come together decide choose a candidate and then vote for him or her thank you so the other question is how do you overcome the chalta hai attitude of this country well uh one of the main diseases that this country has been afflicted with for too long is our chalta hai attitude that also translates to lack of discipline that translates to lack of focus on excellence in execution that translates to following rule of law that leads to corruption so therefore i think we all have to say that this chalta hai attitude is not good for us because we have a small window of opportunity the world is looking at us the world has given us a rare window of opportunity for us to contribute something to the global bazaar to become something worthwhile 
the world has given us an opportunity to solve the problem of poverty and therefore every one of us will shun this chalta hai attitude and that will happen because we will follow Mahatma Gandhi's precept of be the change that you want to see in others. Therefore, before we start preaching others, we will practice that. I think that is what I would say we have to do. Uh, so a couple of questions uh, from Uchul Prakash and other students is that what is the factor which motivate you continuously to work harder and smarter in life? Well, you know, oftentimes I've been asked, I'm now uh, running the, in my 66th year. Many people ask me, what is it that makes me come to the office early in the morning? What is it that makes me travel so much? What is it that makes me uh, do many of the things that I do? I tell them what I said earlier, and that is, I am lucky that I am born and I am physically and mentally active at a rare window of opportunity given to India. People of my previous generation, my father was a very hardworking man. He was a highly educated person. He was a wonderful teacher, he was a very honest man. But he did not have the opportunity to see an India that could potentially be respected by everybody else in the world. God has given me that opportunity to be part of this great marathon of making India a successful economic power. God has given me a rare opportunity of being a, one of the travelers in this journey of solving the problem of poverty of India, which has afflicted us for literally thousands of years. And therefore, I realize that in my own small way, if I can contribute by being a decent and good citizen, then I would have fulfilled my obligations to the best of my abilities. And that's the reason why I love doing whatever I do. So the next question is from Mr. Arvind Pujari. He yeah. wants to know, looking back at your times in Infosys, what is that you regret not having done? Uh, well, this is from Mr. Pujari about uh, other than whatever I have done at emphasis, do I regret having not done anything? You know, I come from a family of teachers. Almost everybody in my family has been a teacher. My father-in-law, my father, my brothers, sisters, sisters-in-law, brother-in-law, almost everybody. And therefore, I think if I could have been a teacher, I think I would have probably enjoyed it even more than what I have enjoyed being a CEO. Because there is one unique quality in a teacher uh, which can be seen only in parents, nobody else. And that is a teacher is quite happy to see his student become better than him or her. That's a rare quality. Second, second, knowledge is the only thing, knowledge is the only thing that increases when you share it with somebody else. So therefore, my only regret is that I did not become a teacher. So the next question is from Dr. Yogeshwari Pathak from PIMR. How do you handle fear? Uh, well, uh, this is from Dr. Yogeshwari. How do I handle fear? 
fear is lack of knowledge why is it that why is it that a child is afraid of going into a dark room the reason is the child doesn't know what is there in that room so therefore the best way to overcome fear is to enhance your knowledge about any issue whenever you are afraid about something please collect a little bit more data and use your analysis and your fear will become reduced please try it i have tried it and every time i have realized that i have been the beneficiary so fear is nothing but lack of knowledge and therefore try and increase your knowledge about that issue and you will become less afraid so couple of questions from various people about corruption i How i hope we are getting questions from youngsters because that's very very yeah, very important it is yeah. from some colleges and from some professors uh, it's on corruption they want to know how do you handle it well value system is all about willing to pay a certain price or certain cost for your beliefs and convictions let me give you a simple example to youngsters to appreciate what i i mean by that let's say you and i are both going on a road and we suddenly see a 1000 rupee note stack if i say look nobody else is no seeing us you and i will split this 100000 rupees you keep 50000 i keep 50000 we go away on the other hand you the youngster will say no 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 this is not right some poor man has dropped this maybe he was supposed to deposit in the treasury maybe he was going to buy a house therefore he wanted to give deposit for this house so we should not deprive him of that so let us go and give it to the police station and let that man get it back then your value system is definitely better than mine because you are willing to forego the benefit of that 50000 rupees so therefore remember that value system is nothing but your willingness to accept a certain cost so what we have done in the past and even today is to say by not agreeing to corruption maybe our approval will get delayed maybe our uh, business will make lower profits but so be it because we know one thing once you have demonstrated it a couple of times that you are not willing to give bribe then the third time that man will not ask because i tell you one thing even the most corrupt person that you may have come across he or she has a certain conscience he and she wants to be seen as a wonderful person in front of his children in front of her children in front of her loved ones so therefore when somebody helps him or her to look better in his own or in her own self esteem a small part of their heart will thank you yes it will not go away quickly but somewhere in their heart they would say oh i am so happy that this man has made me become a little bit better and the third time the third time the fourth time he will very grudgingly do your work but fifth sixth time he will do your work there there are two there are two ways one one rationalization is to say 
that man will say anyway there is no profit from this fellow so let me just do do this quickly and go to the next man from whom i can make profit maybe that could be one thing but the reality is that people are basically they want to enhance their self esteem and anybody that helps them in enhancing their self esteem they will in some way cooperate so in the first two three times you will incur huge losses but after that you will incur huge benefits by being honest so the last question yeah so why did you start the session with a question from a girl <laughs> you know one of the wonderful uh, aspects of indian culture is our respect for women there are many many things in india which you and i would like to change but there are many other things that you and you and i will should make effort to continue and one of those things is the respect we accord to our women and therefore in all public interactions every one of you particularly those in the gallery must from today emphasize the importance of respect to women that's what the great culture of this country used to be well in the recent past some of it may have been lost but therefore it is your responsibility and my responsibility to bring back to the awareness of all of us that this country has some good things to contribute to the world and one of them is respect for our women and therefore we must continue that practice and that's the reason why i always make it a point to start my interaction with a question from a little girl well thank you very much for this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, once again let me say my sincere apologies for not being able to spend time last night i was sick last night i didn't want to tell the collector and others who were so kind to greet me at the airport i went back to my hotel i was really not in a position to even stand i went back to the hotel took a strong tablet and slept and i had 10 and a half hours of sleep and i became fully all right thank you well friends let me share a very small secret very important secret mr narayan murthy was on a visit of three countries <coughs> in spite of the severe jet lag he had he still agreed to keep his commitment and come to indore yesterday when we received him at the airport we saw he was fairly exhausted and obviously he has recouped himself to be able to come to you today aur aaj humne ye jo do din ki knowledge gurukul ki vyavastha ki hai shayad uske guru mantra aapko abhi hi mil gaye hain isse acha guru mantra koi nahi de sakta hai whatever he had said today as i mentioned to you that if you listen carefully it may change your life his advice i recall a very small thing that when mr narayan murthy with six of his friends started something a small 
company with I think about 10 people he had uh, read it somewhere Mr. Narayan Murthy was insistent that anything which is done in that company should be world class even if a window is cleaned if the road is swept he always used to tell people working there it should be world class and that world class culture ingrained into the people and the organization has made Infosys what it is, what it is today and that are, those are the Guru Mans he has given telling us that be the change that you want others to be pride in what you do or lead by example and other things sir we are very thankful to you sharing your experiences and thought process Indoor Management Association sir has been in the forefront of management knowledge dissemination in central India having won continuously 10 local management association awards from all India management association <laughs> sir we have having come this far have taken an onerous task on ourselves that in the management discipline this association in India will focus on leadership as a prime task on which deliberation should be held we have a dream that in next five years time this IMA conclave should become the leadership Davos for Central East Asia Southeast Asia we have dedicated all our efforts towards building leadership traits and towards this each year we conduct two very popular competitions one competition is QFL quest for leaders which is done for management students on the theme topic of the conclave and another competition is YMC young manager competition where young professionals from each individual companies are invited to give their desertion as well as talk about the new thought processes on the topic the competition for 2011 was held sir we will be honored if you would be kind enough to give away the prizes for this competition I would request Sri Ravi Mohanji to kindly invite our chief guest Mr. Narayan Murthy to give away the prizes I will be reading out the names of the winners and they can come on the stage one by one and take their prizes the first prize is in the QFL that is the students competition second runner up was Delhi College Business School The first runner-up was Prestige Institute of Management. And the winner in the category of the QFL was Core Business School. Thank you. Now the winners for the Young Professionals YMC Young Manager Competition. The runner-up was Case Holland, earlier known as LNT.
these are young working professionals and the winners in this category were Cummins Technologies Thank you very much. Well, friends, I have to share a couple of very good news with you. Indoor Management Association for its innovative work has been receiving support from leaders of industry from all over India, from the larger companies. Every year we have a Lifetime Outstanding Achievement Award and it has been the tradition that the winner of the award becomes the chairman of the Lifetime Achievement Award Committee for the next year where a small committee of four people is formed and out of the various parameters, the selection is done and a decision is taken as we had the winner as Mr. Atan Tata last year or Mr. Narayan Murthy. Mr. Narayan Murthy has been gracious enough to accept that he will be the chairman of the committee for next year. So a round of applause for sir. Indoor Management Association has very wide dreams. It wants to take indoor places. And in that, the border of India, border of the state does not matter. We have a very distinguished mentor board whose advice is how to run the Management Association for the future are very important for the Indoor Management Association. Mr. Narayan Murthy has very kindly and graciously accepted the conferring of honorary membership to this mentor board. I would request our chairman, Sri Ravi Mohanji, to kindly hand over the plaque offering this honorary membership to for IMA Distinguished Mentor Board. Thank you, sir. We are honored with your acceptance. We'll promise that we will not be taking too much of your time. Mr. Murthy has said he may not be able to come to Indore, but we can call him any time and he'll be available to us. So very kind of him. In order to keep the memory of Indore Management Association alive, we will be that Murthy is a small इंदौर मैनेजमेंट एसोसिएशन का मेमेंटो जो हमारे लिए बहुत ही गौरवशाली रहा है बहुत ही अच्छा रहा है जिसको हम शेयर करते हैं अपने खास मेहमानों से उसको प्रेजेंट करने के लिए हम बुलाना चाहेंगे हमारे स्वयं के परमप्रिय मंत्री साहब श्री कैलाश विजयवर्गीय जी को कि अगर आप हमारी तरफ से ये मेमेंटो दें तो हमें ऑनर होगा Sir, we request Honorable Sri Kailash Vijayabhagi ji, MP State Cabinet Minister for Industry and IT to present the IMM memento to Sri Narayan Murthy ji.
थैंक यू थैंक यू कैलाश जी कैलाश जी धन्यवाद वेल फ्रेंड्स सच ए वॉर्म सेशन वी वुड ऑलवेज लाइक टू गो ऑन एंड ऑन लेकिन समय की अपनी सीमा होती है हमें कहीं ना कहीं विराम देना पड़ता है द नेक्स्ट सेशन वी हैव टू वंडरफुल स्पीकर्स डॉक्टर अंजनी जैन डीन ऑफ वॉर्टन यूनिवर्सिटी फ्रॉम यूएसए इज विद अस मिस्टर सोनल डबराल द एनिग्मेटिक लीडर स्पीकर इज विद अस हम अभी चाय के लिए ब्रेक करेंगे वी विल ब्रेक फॉर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स एंड वी रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू असेंबल बैक हीयर अगेन एंड विद दिस वी ब्रिंग दिस सेशन टू ए क्लोज थैंक यू वेरी मच